Hello viewers, uh, Pranesh Balasubramaniam, one of the eye doctors. Um, I'm currently working at Moorfields in London, UK. And I've come here uh, to train in this uh, short-term training program in fake commensification at Nandadipai Hospital. And it has been a fantastic experience so far. So we, I want to ask lots of questions to Sir as well about um, uh, the various unique features of, of this training program and to discuss more on surgical training in general. Yeah, but before we start, Pranesh, that uh, I think uh, I've been watching your uh, YouTube channel, King's Crest, for a long period. Like, uh, it is so useful for all postgraduates, but for also us, you know, if we want to see something basic and you have a unique ability to, you know, do that illustration, you make those handmade illustrations to explain, even I think mnemonics to remember how to remember, uh, very good. So, I always, you know, Tell my PGs that you should subscribe this channel uh, so it will make it very easy for you for exams. Thank yes. you so much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Because that, that's very important for us to make things simpler, um, the complex topic like ophthalmology. Yeah. And, and you are doing the same as well, which is much more important, much more complex surgeries. I've always uh, felt that it's easy to teach a medical concept or like a theoretical concept. But to deconstruct uh, a very complex, high-stakes situation like surgeries into simpler aspects, something which is amazing. And you have been doing this for a long time. You're one of the most followed, uh, most subscribed surgical trainers on YouTube and elsewhere. Um, so I've got some questions, sir. Uh, this is a very unique training program. Um, so my perspective is that I've got trained in, in, in a premier institute in India. And then I had a break for a while from train uh, from, from surgical training. Now I'm in UK and having an NHS experience. So I'm seeing the best of both worlds. Uh, but uh, no matter how we are, surgical training has always been taken like a step motherly approach mm -hmm. uh, because of the opportunities, because of various logistics and, and, and so many other reasons, which we'll discuss later as well. And such training programs uh, like, like yours really help us to fulfill that deficit what we are having, which is a fantastic opportunity for, for, for experienced people like me uh, who want to resume the surgical training and also for the beginning residents who have not got enough training in their training or residency period. So how did you conceive this plan of uh, surgical training program hmm. and when did you do this? So uh, very interesting because uh, I never thought that I will be, you know, going into this field when I finish my residency. Uh, from RP Center Ames and then I did my senior residency also there in retina. Mm. So my plan when I joined practice was to specialize in retina and that's it. So that was my preliminary plan. But when I joined, I realized that uh, I need to be a good cataract surgeon as well because our hospital is in peripheral area. So here, uh, though there is requirement of specialists, but there is a lot of requirement for cataract surgery also. So once I once I realized that, so during my specialization, I was focusing on retina and I did a uh, uh, few cataracts also, but that was not my, you know, focus or attention, like, because I was thinking that it's okay, I'm going to do just retina. Occasionally, I will do cataract. But when I came here, I joined in first year, I realized, no, I have to focus on cataract also. Mm. Now, I have to learn on my own. Okay. Like in an institute, of course, there will be someone who is hand holding you going through steps and everything but when i am here though i have done probably 400 surgeries by that time i want to operate on my private patient so i have to be very good that's that that i think is one thing which always i had since beginning of my education that i want to do the best for whatever it's whether it is an examination or it's uh, in practice so when i realized that when i started learning i didn't have that much of you know opportunity of or media I would say to learn things from there were few videos uh, maybe they used to come in now those days DVDs or you know so I used to watch them but there was nothing that you know they used to show what they are doing like you know this is how we do the surgery but there was no one to tell me that you know this step these mistakes can occur these are the things you should avoid okay those I started kind of deconstructing on my own Okay. So, in second year of my practice, uh, I had joined my father. So, in second year of my practice, I told my father that uh, I should start a fellowship program. So, he was like, you know, you will get busy in your private practice itself. So, why do you want to put more efforts in training a fellow? 
So I said, no, I feel that I am learning and I feel that I can teach someone so I can learn better. So that's how I started long term fellowship program in our hospital. That was in 2012. Mm. Okay, so that was 13 years back. And uh, it happened so that uh, with my fellow, I st started learning better and better. Mm -hmm. And uh, the surgical video recording was something which I always had opportunity in my, uh, you know, when I was doing PG because RP Center had the video recordings and everything. So that I was used to. So I used the same here also. I used to record all my surgeries, whether there is a complication or not. I will record them and then I will discuss it with my fellows. Mm -hmm. If I had a complication, then that definitely that is something I will show to my fellow. Like, see, I had this complication. Let's see. Uh, I feel this is how why it happened. And then. so then I started editing those videos, my complications and other things. And I started slowly putting those up on YouTube. At that time, YouTube was, uh, you know, the, the new platform, which was free. So you could upload anything and then we can view it again. I just recently saw in 2009 or 10, I had uploaded my first video of uh, ILM peeling in retina. So <laughs> it's interesting. So uh, when I started doing that, editing those videos and then uploading, uh, the idea was that I, sh I should learn from those. Similarly, I should transfer those knowledge, that knowledge to others also. So they can also see and, you know, suggest me or they can also learn from right. it. So that's how the YouTube uh, uploading started, though I was not very consistent with that because I was busy with practice and also fellows were there. But I used to ask all my fellows to, you know, try to get those videos, complications, your cases and discuss. Let's discuss those things. So that's how I started teaching people. And uh, then most of my fellows, they did quite well. They learned quite well. And uh, they had the same feedback that, sir, you can tell us many things in very simple manner. And uh, that helps a lot because uh, it makes things easy to understand when we are doing surgery. So kind of the same step, if uh, I see thousand times somebody doing, I don't understand. But when you tell us like, you know, these are the finer nuances, I we immediately understand. So that helped. So then I started putting more videos on YouTube mm -hmm. and many viewers started seeing those and then complimenting that, you know, it's helping. Then... Uh, Still, till that time, I had not started short term training because I was busy with my practice and I did that. Then uh, one of the surgeons approached me that I want to come and learn with you. Mm. So I said, see, we have long term program. We don't have a short term. But he insisted, no, I want to come. Uh, if you don't allow me, it's okay. I will observe. But if you can help me out, I will be more than happy to uh, do some short term training. So he forcibly kind of came. <laughs> so anyway, when he came, uh, I trained him and uh, the same feedback I got that you are a very good trainer because he had been to other centers at that time also and still he was struggling. Uh, so he told me one thing that others, you know, kind of try to teach him surgery, but uh, uh, he told me that you made me a surgeon. So there is a difference in two things, you know. Learning surgery is another, but being surgeon means you have to think like a surgeon. So probably that kind of encouraged me that, okay, this is a good uh, thing, which, uh, you know, I can explore. There are, uh, you know, uh, surgeons like him who wants to get trained and they can be better. And as you said, uh, nowadays, like now it's almost like eight, nine years since uh, I started uh, doing this short term training program. Now you have seen that we have a good team which uh, does that. Uh, there are many uh, surgeons who go through these phases. Okay. Uh, like you have done uh, good surgeries before, but then you had a back, uh, you know, break in between. So obviously one, one who is not in touch or sometimes somebody doesn't get opportunity because of so many factors. Uh, then kind of you start thinking, you know, whether I can do it again or not, whether I mean, you know, I can, I can be a surgeon or I should just leave surgery. So there are many factors. Mm. There are youngsters, like you said, that during post-graduation, unfortunately, they don't get that many opportunities. So they also want to learn B long breaks. Even we had surgeons who have stopped surgeries for 10 years and they came back like they wanted to learn. They learned here and then they started doing surgeries, uh, you know, when they went back. So that's quite encouraging for us also because uh, we just don't want to uh, teach them surgery. We want to make, uh, you know, kind of uh, try to make some changes in their life which are positive. Right. So that helps. You know? So that's that has been uh, our journey. journey. And 
of course the team you know i always feel that alone we can do only you know this much but we have a good team who have a common goal i think we can do exponentially more it's very true sir uh, i like the way you said when when that surgeon said that uh, doing surgery is different but calling himself you made me a surgeon yeah you you have created a new identity for them yes that is the most important thing when someone asks you when someone says i am an eye surgeon it takes sort of confidence to say that yes uh, at times i also feel should i say that i am an eye surgeon should i just say as an eye doctor yeah um so on a certain level we we have that competence and i'm very happy to hear that that particular surgeon uh, was like reborn again yeah as a surgeon